Hello, Mr. Movie Lover here with another movie review. As I promised to my daughter, this video is about Trolls World Tour, the 2020 sequel to the 2016 film Trolls. It stars Anna Kendrick as Queen Poppy and Justin Timberlake as her bestie named Branch. Before I get into this movie and the main topic, I feel like I need to discuss the previous Trolls installments. When the first film came out, I wasn't super excited about it. I remember the Trolls dolls from the 90s, but I never really did much with them, and I wasn't really sure what to expect with this one. So we didn't go watch it in theaters. We ended up renting it from Redbox one day because nothing else seemed good. We loved it! It wasn't super deep, and some people might complain that the humor was too corny. Gotcha. The troll gets scared and poops out cupcakes. For us, it was just what we were looking for. It's a non-stop ride of nostalgia-driven cover songs that have one underlying message. Happiness is inside us all. The antagonists are the Bergens, specifically one Bergen named Chef. They are droll, giant people compared to the trolls that are only able to experience happiness one day a year when they eat trolls on a holiday called Trollstice. The first troll movie ends with Poppy and her friends proving to the Bergens that they are perfectly able to find happiness all on their own. That's an alright message in today's society where people are obsessed with social media likes and posts and retweets and staring at their YouTube studio page waiting for the view count to increase. Happiness doesn't require such things if you look inside yourself and allow yourself to be happy all on your own. By the way, if you are watching this, please give this video a like. And if you're not watching this, you might be having a dream. And that's kind of weird. Subscribing to the channel will give you more opportunities to watch my videos. But if you don't, I'll still survive with my inner happiness. And that's what's important. One of the great honors of being a parent is getting to watch and or listen to the exact same movie over and over and over again. For some movies, that can be pretty rough. Pippi Longstockings, for instance. With Trolls, we did not mind. Sing with the songs and laugh at all the jokes and quote everything that is quotable in there. And the holiday special that came out on Netflix was similarly enjoyable. It also didn't have too deep a message. You can't force your friends to be happy the same way you are. Poppy feels sorry for her friends, the Bergens, that they lost their only holiday, which was eating trolls. Ugh. They were able to find happiness inside them, but they still needed a new way to celebrate. Poppy and her friends visited Bergentown and tried to force them to celebrate one of their own many holidays. Of course, none of them sounded too great to the Bergens, especially the spider tickle one. Blech. They eventually discover their own holiday, celebrating their new friendship with the trolls. That message packed a little more of a punch than the first movie. You can't just force others to be happy like you. They have to discover it on their own. Now, let's discuss the main course. But first, my daughter has a few things to say about it. So Franny, why should we do a video about Trolls World Tour? Because I like the Trolls World Tour. Good answer. What do you like most about Trolls World Tour? Um, that singing. What's your favorite song? Um, we have a good time. Oh, and which song is that? Um, Peace I O. Oh, so you mean the part inside the opening song, Trolls Just Want to Have Fun? Yeah. That's what I meant. Trolls have a good time. Okay. Who's your favorite troll? Tiny, tiny Diamond. I don't know how to say it. Say Tiny Diamond. Tiny Diamond. Oh. Uh, so you say Tiny Diamond is his name? Yes. Cool. Um, who's your least favorite troll? Um, probably Growly Pete. You mean Growly Pete? Yeah. The best troll of them all? No. Oh. That's just so sad. Is there anything else you have to say about Trolls World Tour before we finish? Um, only I really love about World, World Tour that Poppy doesn't turn into a zombie. Right. Poppy doesn't actually turn into rock zombie. Spoiler alert. 
Okay, well, that's our interview with Franny about her take on Trolls World Tour. Back to you. Bye. Trolls World Tour may seem like a silly movie with songs and gumdrops and Ozzy Osbourne, but I feel like it embodies the natural progression of the subtext of the first Trolls movie and the holiday special. First, happiness is within you. Then, you can't force others to experience happiness like you do. And now, cultures are different, and differences are what brings us together. It's kind of a jump from the first movie, but it's a bold message. But there's much more subtext that the five-year-olds who are the target audience will not understand. Also, spoiler warnings up ahead for Trolls World Tour. I'm going to eventually give away the ending. In TWT, we discover that there are six troll nations. Hard rock, pop, country, classic, techno, and funk. The plot has Queen Barb of the hard rock trolls trying to steal all the other five trolls nation strings that they use to create their music. She is introduced as she overwhelms the techno trolls, discounting their music as nothing but beeps and bloops. I know there had to be people watching this movie that had to agree with her and don't understand why people listen to techno. There are also others who probably disagree with them and love techno. That's where the theme is going. Barb's plan is to collect all the strings and unite them under one nation of rock. She's seen as the obvious antagonist as she flies around with her rock army overpowering every other nation to steal their string and eventually using them to turn all the trolls into rock zombies. So we have the obvious good versus bad established at the beginning. The pop trolls are oblivious to any other nation of trolls as they thought their music was the only kind. When Queen Barb invites them to the One Nation Under Rock World Tour, Poppy thinks it's a good thing and it will unite the trolls in harmony. King Peppy, well, formerly King, doesn't want them to join the other trolls, thinking that they're too different. Side note, in the first movie, King Peppy escapes the Bergens barely without even a piece of clothing on. So how did he even smuggle the string into Troll Village without the other pop trolls noticing it? I don't know. So Poppy goes on her mission to show Barb that differences don't matter, and that all trolls are the same, so they should just all get along. Cooper has his own side mission as well. In the first movie, I had questions about how he looks so completely different than all the other trolls. The sequel answers that by having him notice in the scrapbook history lesson that the funk trolls looked very similar to him. To a theme that sounds eerily like Luke Skywalker's, he sets out to find his own people. And when he finds the Funk Trolls, he finds out that he's a prince, kind of like Luke Skywalker. Back to Poppy, when she finds the Country Trolls in Lonesome Flats, their music is sad, and Poppy can't get over it. She decides that trolls shouldn't be sad, and that they need to sing the most important song in music history. So they sing Spice Girls, Who Let the Dogs Out, Good Vibrations, Gangnam Style, and Party Rock by LMFAO. As you would expect from a crowd of country music fans, they naturally lock them up. And the leader of the country trolls says what they did was a crime against music. Here we see an underlying conflict in the movie. Every troll nation thinks their music is the only right way to make music. Many of them even weaponize their music, like Chaz, the smooth jazz troll. It isn't until Poppy meets with the funk trolls that she meets Prince D, who is kind of the true hero of the movie along with Cooper that she starts to understand why her message isn't much better than Barb. Barb thinks that her music, hard rock, is the only music that there should be. She takes them by force, both by taking their strings and then using the strings to turn trolls into hard rockers. This translates into our society where sometimes Western society has taken over other cultures by force and because they thought their way was the only good way, forced the others to lose their own heritage. This has actually happened countless times in history. Poppy is similar to Barb, where she thinks that her way is the only way. She doesn't listen to anyone else in the movie, constantly pushing forward her own agenda. And she doesn't even see this until Prince D tells her that scrapbooks are only written by the winners, and sings one of my favorite songs in the movie, It's All Love. Suddenly she has a glass breaking moment. You're always correcting people. That's where she realizes that the trolls came disconnected because of what her pop ancestors did. They were the first to think that their music was the best and tried to hoard all the strings to themselves. And so that's why all the other nations decided to separate. So in the climax, Barb gets all the strings and starts to turn trolls into rock zombies, starting with Branch. 
Pop used the gumdrops to stop Barb from turning her, and instead of turning the others, she just destroys all the strings, destroying all the music apparently. And immediately all the trolls turn from the rainbow of colors into dull gray, signifying, as in the first movie, that all their joy is gone. Cooper and Prince D discover they had music inside them all along, just like how in the first movie they all had happiness inside them all along. And they sing a song and everyone lives happily ever after. Barb is even forgiven and joins with Poppy to start a girl band. So what do we learn? That imperialism is bad? Well, yes. Also, music isn't just rock music. Lots of music critics can turn their nose up at other music that isn't theirs. I used to think when I was little that country plus rap equals crap. That was a fun joke we had. Now, growing older, my music tastes have expanded. I appreciate country music. They're good for a certain mood, and the same with hip-hop. Music is music. Trolls is trolls. Trolls is trolls. Wow. Deep. It's in the eye of the beholder. Except Baby Shark. No. No. If you don't like something, it doesn't mean it's bad necessarily. Except for Baby Shark. There were plenty of people who didn't like trolls. And that movie probably wasn't made for them. And that's why I like to find the good things in most movies, especially ones that other people read off. Unless there were horrible adaptations to one of the best animated TV shows ever. So if you like a type of music, maybe try to branch out. Maybe you didn't pay much attention to country before, but Old Town Road opened a door for you. Or maybe, in my case, the hit TV show Nashville. Our differences are important. It's what makes us unique, but we can also embrace other cultures and learn from them. And that's what Trolls World Tour is all about. Well, that and poop jokes. Happy birthday! So, Franny, what, what did you learn from watching Trolls World Tour? That Barb is a bad band. Why is Barb bad? Because she started to destroy music. She's trying to destroy the music? Mm hmm. Okay. What about Poppy? Um, she turned out nice. Okay. So she was right the whole time? Yeah. But when, but he thinks the more trolls the merrier. The more trolls the merrier? Yeah. Alright. Well, thank you for that in-depth intuition. Thanks for watching this video. And thanks to my daughter for the idea. If you have any ideas for movies that you'd like me to do a video about, please write it down in the comments and I'll consider it. Also, feel free to check out some of my other videos if this is your first time visiting my channel. I'll be back later, but until then, this is Mr. Movie Lover saying thanks for watching!